Okay, hello, IBCA. Um, whoops, it's all my practice stuff. Let me get rid of this. Okay, um, this is our first day um, review. So um, I don't want the video to be too long for you guys so it doesn't take too long to download or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into it. Um, you should have Microsoft Word on your computer, obviously. So to find mine, I usually just type it in here because for some reason I never seem to have an icon on my screen. I could right-click on this and um, pin it up there. It usually creates a shortcut. Anyway, I'm just going to open it. Um, I'm using Microsoft Office 2016 Home and Student Edition. Um, remember we talked about this. This is what it's going to look like when you first um, open up um, your Microsoft Word. Um, mine has a few things here that I've used lately, but what we're going to do is just open a blank document. So you double click that and you have something that looks like this. I think most people will actually have a ruler up here at the top as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click view and turn my ruler on. You may not. I really don't I, I really don't remember if I've messed with this one enough to change that or if you do or don't. It really doesn't matter. But this ruler up here that we did not discuss and there's actually one here on the left as well. It's showing you the actual size of the piece of paper that you'll be printing on. Um, and so if you were to take an eight by eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper and put up against this, because mine is at one hundred percent view, that means this is exactly how big whatever it is that I type or put on here. I forgot this is a touch screen, so look out. Um, <laughs> but um, whatever you put on there, it's it, it will be exact real time. If now for my purposes in this class, I'm actually going to change this to about 150 just so you can see it better. You don't have to do that on yours. But um, so now if I were to put a piece of paper up to this, this is not no more no longer accurate. If I put my name here, that's not right. Is it autocorrect? No. Good enough. Okay, if I put my name here and I it's not going to be the same size when I print it out. Make sense? If you have it on hundred percent it will. That is exact size. Okay, so we did not cover that in class, but I just wanted to, because everyone's view is going to be a little bit different um, in a lab where I could control everybody's uh, stuff. I could make everything look exactly the same, but in our kind of setting, we're all working with what we already have or, you know, with different variety of different things. So we're not going to stress too much out about if yours doesn't look exactly like mine. Don't worry about it. Um, it, that, that doesn't really matter. Okay, some things we covered today. Let me come over here to home. Okay, so these at the top, your top menu buttons here. Um, really all we looked at today was some stuff that was under home. First, we talked about your clipboard. Um, how you can double click, oh, let's start back. If I single click, I will have my cursor in the middle of a word wherever I click. If I double click, it's going to select the whole word. If I triple click, it should select whatever is on my line, um, possibly your whole paragraph. I can't remember right now, but I think it's, it, it selects like your whole uh, area. I wanna say, I want to say it's the whole paragraph, and right now this is all I have. So, um, so I'm going to triple click it, cut with Control X, paste with Control V, um, copy Control C. Looks like nothing happens. It means you hold down the Control button and then also hit C or hit V or X, whichever one we're doing. Um, but now when I hit Control V to paste, it will basically just keep pasting it as many times as I want it. Okay. Um, let's see. We also learned Control A 
which means you hit control A, that's going to select everything on your document. Um, with this, you can change whatever you, whatever adjustments or modifications you make will now affect everything that is highlighted. And when you hit control A, it is selecting your entire document. So I'm going to hit control B to make it nice and bold. Um, I'm going to hit control B again to unbold. It's basically the same as clicking this little B right here. It's the same as just clicking it. Um, like I said in class, I want to encourage you guys to try to use your hotkeys as much as possible. Using your keyboard is usually always superior to clicking up here. Um, it just will make you a much faster word processor um, than you would be without it. So control I is italics, which is this thing. I'm using my cursor. It's right up here. Control I will turn it off. Control U to underline everything. Control U to un underline everything. If I only wanted to underline this one, I triple clicked it, hit Control U. It just does that one. Triple click this one. Bold. Control B. Uh, triple click this one. I got Control I for italics. Um, if I want to write justify this, my name, Control R puts it all the way to the right. Um, when you do the justification, you actually don't need to be like have the whole thing click. Like how this one is just in my name, and I hit Control E, it's going to center it even though the whole thing wasn't selected because you can't really center part of a word. When you're on a line, it's got to pick one or the other. Unless we're doing columns, which will be later. Um, it, so we have Control E. Let's see. Control R is right justified. Control L equals left justified, and control and E will give you your center justification. Center justified. Um, also, you have control. Like I told y'all in class, I've never used this one though, not for anything important anyway. Um, would be just called justified, which means it will put it throughout the entire. Um, See, for some reason there's a space in here. So if I have a whole line like this and I hit control J, it's a little bit more. The reason this is not looking right is because I need a whole paragraph for this, for this to really for you guys to see what I'm talking about. So let me just make these all kind of together. Bear with me for a second. See my name like a thousand times is kind of funny, but it's all good. Okay, so let me see what this does. Um, you can hit Control J. It's kind of hard to tell because it's lined up nice. Probably because it's all the same words. Um, but that makes it step, go from here to the end without any. Um, so the entire document would look the same. You get the idea for that one. Um, that just means justified. Okay, it'll look like a square, kind of. Like I said, most of your Bibles uh, will be justified. No pun intended. <laughs> okay, so um, a couple other things we did in class today. We, we changed the colors. So if I want to change my name here to green, you go up to your dialog box. Well, I'm sorry, this dialog box, this menu right here is for your fonts, your font menu. So right here where this A is with the, uh, yours should look like, where's my default? It looks like this. With the red underneath it, um, you can just click that and it'll default to red. It'll default to whatever color's under that line. Or you pick whatever color you want. So if I say I want purple, and then I come to this one, it's not going to be red anymore. You see how my last one was purple? So it's going to, if I click, it'll just, I don't have to, I don't have to look through the menu. Um... But let's say I want one purple and the other one. If I don't want it to be purple, I'm going to have to use this arrow and decide that I want it. If I don't like any of these, I'm trying to look for some sort of Go Tigers gold or something. Um, you hit more colors. Then you can find one of these gives you more. Or if you're really artsy, hit custom. And then you can, and you if you're ever working for a company that wants you to, um, like they tell you art, 
um, we'll talk about marketing later, but like they'll tell you our color is red, such and such, green, such and such, blue, such and such. That means that there's actual, like, you know, an actual code for their specific color. Let's see what kind of awful color I probably just made. Oh, that's pretty. Some kind of aqua, like some kind of turquoise green with whatever I just typed in. I didn't even pay attention. Um, yeah, with 100, 150, 125, it was this like, I don't know, turquoisey looking green. Um, or you can like sort of just wander around the palette. So you're like, oh, this is pretty. Let's go with, you know, whatever this is. That's ugly. Um, that. Okay, so we have sort of a purple and gold thing going here. And then if I do this one, I can change it also to that same color. Um, your recent, you recently used colors will be right there. So if I am like, Ugh, I don't remember where I found that gold, click here and it will be right here under your use, your recent colors. Um, one thing I did not show you in class, but I'll go ahead and show you now and I'll show you next week. Since I just changed the font of this, if you use control Y, it will change whatever formatting you just did. It will copy it. It will, um, it will like, uh, you, it'll use the same formatting. I'm not sure how to word that as what you just did. How to close this like Okay, so if I took this and made it, um, you know, I don't know, 26 point font, and yeah, 26 point font, and then I want this word to be 26 point font as well, I can just hit Control Y and it'll do exactly the same as what I had just done. Okay, so I'm going to hit Control-Z and I do those. Um, Control-Z equals undo. Um, Control-Y, it actually equals redo. So as you... So play around with that one. Apparently it does a little bit more than what I'm used to using. Um, because it looks like it can, like whatever you just typed, looks like it'll even do that. So that's kind of neat. Um, but control Y basically means we're going to repeat something that we just did. Whereas control Z means we're going to undo something that we just did. It was a mistake. So undo it. Control Y is like, that was great. Let's do it again. <laughs> okay. Um, a few other things we looked at up here. Um, we didn't talk about the fonts yet. If you want to look at that, you can just click the arrow and there's all kind of beautiful fonts here. You can like change your to whatever you want on here you can actually download you pay for them usually but you can download new fonts especially if you're doing any kind of artsy things i make vinyl shirts sometimes not often but sometimes and so i've downloaded a few fonts for that so some of my computers have that on it um this here let's get on a different word um this one here it's called change case you will, you can click that to make the whole thing uppercase is what it will be used the most. But you also could make uh, lowercase the whole thing. Or you can do a sentence case, which is what your normal sentence structure is. Um, or toggle case was strange or capitalize each word, any of that. So this thing here is called Kate, what was it called? Case something. If you don't know, it's called change case. If you don't know, like if we're, if we're taking the certification exam, and it tells you change case, blah, 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 or anything like that, you can hover over something until you see the, the, the kind of buzzwords you're looking for. Um, we can highlight, which I think we actually did that in class. Here's your highlighter. It'll default to a bright yellow highlight. Um, or you can highlight with something else. Any of these, uh, like, gray or maybe, I don't know, black seems kind of weird. Okay, so it gave me a highlighter for that one. I guess I didn't have it selected anymore. So if I have this and I change my font to white, it's not the best. Then it, you can see it. Must have been still there. You just can't see it because it doesn't have the highlight behind. Okay, so you can play around with that um, with highlighting behind your words. Um, if it's something really dark, change your font color. You know, you can make some really pretty stuff with this. We're going to be making really pretty stuff uh, beyond just this. This, because right now, technically, Word thinks I'm just making a simple document. 
Um, so there's all that. Let's look at a uh, paragraph real quick. It defaults to doing like some sort of one and a half spacing thing. So let's say I want all this to smush together instead of it being separated. Come up here to our paragraph. Um, the dialog the dialog box launcher is this right here. So click the little this little guy, and this opens our dialog box for paragraphs. What we're gonna do spacing after means every time I hit enter, it's gonna give me eight points, an eight point um, separation. Before is like. The before part can really kind of mess you up because um, that should that should be defaulted to zero, but you can add you can make that bigger if you want, or you can make it. And again, what I love about new newer um, meaning since 1999, what I love about the newer stuff is how whatever you're about to do gives you this cool little previews down here, and um, you can kind of see what it's doing. You see how it gives space underneath this paragraph, and then this one gives you space like before it. I just think that's neat. So if you want them all to be together, put it on zero. You can either use your arrows or just type it in. Um, zero. Hit OK. Whoops. What happened? Let me see. I must have done something wrong. Oh, I accidentally clicked this. Line spacing multiple. Don't do that. This would be, should say single. and Because what it did, it said multiple at three. So just ignore that um so you want your paragraph here to be zero zero and single and that will put everything close together um if you're writing a paper or something and it keeps adding spaces and you're like i cannot get rid of this check to make sure this box isn't um th this like box is maybe checked or unchecked because it this might be a problem um if not, because you could, anyway, just check here. This is where you should be able to find that. Um, if you want it double space, your teacher says, you know, double space this whole thing. I'm going to tell you, I prefer to keep this at zeros and then change this here, unless I'm doing something specific for, um, that, that needs different kind of uh, formatting. But this, you can, right here is where you change it to double spacing. And that will give you an entire free line between each line. Okay, we did not look at the rest of this. Um, on that, this here is a quicker way of getting to that. This little guy here, line and paragraph spacing. So if I want to go back to one, 1.15, 1 1.5, 2.5, 3.0, um, you might want to use this, like I said, like you're doing song lyrics or whatever. Um, and then this will open up that box that we were just looking at. Uh, so this is your little shortcut right here for that. I'm going to put it back to one, I guess. Okay. I don't think we discussed any more of that. We talked about the clipboard. Whatever you cop cut, or whatever you cut or copy will go to your clipboard. If you hit delete, it does not go to a clipboard. It's gone, kind of. I mean, nothing's gone anymore these days because you can just hit Control Z a bunch. But it's not like on your clipboard ready to go. Whatever you copied or cut last is going to be the next thing that Control Z. Oops, I didn't put that on here. I didn't put any of those. Um, and I'm writing in white, you see. Troubleshoot yourself sometimes. Okay, so let's do automatic and let's do our background. No color. Um, equals copy. To clipboard, something like that. Control um, X equals cut to clipboard, and Control Z equals um, paste from clipboard. Okay. Um, and like I think Nathan pointed out, X, C, V are right there in an order on the bottom of your keyboard, so it's cut, copy, paste, just like that. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll show you right now because I'm going to put these in that order. Cut, copy, paste. I'm going to control X, get rid of this guy. I'm going to put my cursor right in front of this guy. Hit enter. Arrow up. And hit control V. And stick it right there. I hit, um, remember, delete. Delete is not usually like 
my, on my keyboard, delete is here. I don't know if you can see this or not. A lot of your, your delete is going to be over to the right um, or up high or something. I wish delete, I use it all the time, so I wish it was a little bit handier, but it's not. It's um, So delete will remove, well, delete a, a character to your, to the, to the right of the cursor. Um, backspace, mine actually just looks like an arrow going left, but most of you, it might say backspace on it or whatever. Um, that's going to um, move a character to the left of the cursor. It's not just a character either. Like if you have an actual picture there and you hit backspace, it'll get rid of the whole picture. So now I can put my paragraphs back right. Oops. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see. Whoa. There we go. The defaults on Word can be annoying, honestly, because like either whoever's used your computer before, you may have changed up some stuff, or the version you got, or the student one does this and that. So sometimes you have to. You can kind of you can conquer those defaults though by knowing how to uh, manipulate it yourself. Um. I did not show y'all. Uh. Control backspace, which is what another one of my very favorite things to use because I type really fast and I, that means I mess up a lot. And so if I am, okay, this is a good one. Well, typing a sentence and I want to remove an entire word. I'm going to hit control backspace. Well, that was the comma. And it gets rid of my entire word with one keystroke. So it's so for in four or five keystrokes, I've gotten rid of five words versus like you know a bunch. So control backspace gets rid of those um, entire words. Okay. Um, I don't remember if there was anything else that we talked about in class. So what I want to tell you is to um, hit file, save as for anything that you're trying to save for your class. Um, we'll talk about this in class because this is a little more in depth. But if you know how already to save to folders, you know um, an easy, a good place to keep every, anything that you're not that you're using currently. I always look at that as like, if this is something I'm going to be looking at again within the next week or two, it's going on my desktop. Just as if you were in an office and it's something you need to look at soon, put it on your desktop. If it's your taxes or something that you probably maybe never look at again, or it's gonna, it could be months before anybody cares, just put them in a different folder. But for my desktop, it's for things that I like to have that are more like current. And so, um, and within here, let's see, I don't have one started yet for this. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it IBCA. Um, Angel Bridges is my old store name. That is not some kind of weird, like, <laughs> that is, that's what our store used to be called. We made VT. So, anyway, so on this PC, under Windows and Users, it's Angel Bridges BR, which is the only um, user I have on my desktop. Y'all will say something else. It'll say whatever your name is, your parents' name or something. And under my desktop is where IBCA is. Now, I don't want to just save this right here. I want it to be inside that folder. So I had to double click it. And as you can tell, IBCA now is up here. Now, I'm not going to name it this, obviously. That's awful. So I'm going to put day one practice. You can call it whatever you want. Make sure it's saved as a Word document. Hit save. And boom. I've got it. Um, I need, that's my husband. I need to call him, and I will probably do a second video later to talk about a little bit about what we're doing next week. But if not, um, y'all were an awesome class. Um, I'm looking forward to the rest of it. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I need to tell y'all before I close out. Remember, this is minimize. That means it puts it down in your tray, so you can open it right back up. Don't keep Xing out of Microsoft Word every time you do something else, because you're just it's going to drive you crazy having to wait on it so much. So just minimize. You can, your, most computers are fast enough to handle having it open and something else. Um, this one will make it smaller or full screen. And then the X up here on the right will actually close it all the way. And since I've already got it saved, I'm going to go ahead and exit out. And I will see you guys on Monday.